a very good day to use Bob Winds. It's a cloudy day here in Murungwe and uh, you know, uh, it's raining too. Thank God for the rains. Let's look at a number of things. I want to give an analysis for you as the people's comments are. Chinu Chedu, uh, Honorable Temba Miswa, coming from me. First of all, we have, we're done with the fact that we now have a sitting president, but what's critical is him discharging his duties according to the Constitution and so forth. Cabinet, he, they serve at his pleasure. The vice presidents, they serve at his pleasure. Whoever is going to put there, he must understand that he must be able to perform. Failure to perform will result in him not being able to then direct this economy to where it must go. It's about the turnaround of the economy, which is more important. There are some other ministers in there who have been expelled from Zanu PF. For example, Comrade Mozambi, uh, Comrade uh, Ramwani, uh, Comrade Mpoko, and so forth. They cannot serve in government if they've been expelled from the party. The same reason why the cabinet ministers refused to go to a cabinet meeting called by the then president, Comrade Mugabe, because they felt he was no longer a member of the party and they could not go to somebody who was, they could not go to a cabinet led by somebody who was no longer a member of the party. This is where I've always said the party is supreme, people always follow the party and so forth. But equally, there are some other cabinet ministers who are there. We have worked hard, we have tried to perform and so forth. I will not name any names because it's not about that, but I'm sure the, the president and uh, commander in chief, uh, His Excellency, Idi uh, Mnangagwa, knows who the people are since he's worked with them for a very long time. It's not about uh, victimization, it's not about retribution, it's about coming up with the best team. Yes, inclusive, what does it mean? Let's just use that word. People are talking about a transitional government, people are talking about an inclusive government. The only thing that ZANU-PF can do, which has the cake, is to invite ministers to come on board, to discharge their duties according to their expertise and so forth. But really, we must ask ourselves, does the opposition want to aid ZANU-PF in turning around? Or the opposition equally wants to also get into office on a, on a new list, which is the coming elections, which the president indicated clearly that there were going to be elections and so forth. If the president includes members of the opposition in his cabinet and they do well, remember that the success will go to him. Equally, if the president includes them in the fail, they will also be part of the failure. So this is something that we've got to understand and will their party allow them to be part of the inclusive government and so forth. Let's not try and allow a certain tone to happen and try and create this mantra that it is a right for people to be part of the inclusive party. If you talk about us being inclusive, sharing the cake, the councillor for Zanubia, for MDC, for whichever party at that level, must also share that position with others. It must start from the bottom and going up. The member of parliament too must equally share with other people who did not win. Then we go to government and so forth. It's critical that His Excellency Edim um, Nangagwa uh, tackles the issue of the provincial councils and so forth. Does he need to have provincial affairs ministers? That's really up to him. But he's got eight months to be able to do quite a lot. Does he continue with some of the things which are there and work on the economy which is critical? What people want at the end of the day is a turnaround. Let him be seen to be doing the right things. What's also critical from the people's comments are from an analytical point of view is that the opposition must work hard on the elections 2018. They must be on the ground. Most of them that I've spoken to are clear in saying that, listen, we'd love to go on the ground, we have no resources. But that's not for anybody's issue to tackle. It's for you who want to be in power, to put your house in order so that you're able to be in power and govern and, in, and turn around the economy as per your manifesto that you have and so forth. The other issue that I want to talk about is Tim Lacoste. Well done, Tim Lacoste. Certainly, you you were certainly uh, a step ahead of everyone. You had the ace card, you have played it and so forth. We cannot default those factions. But what I'm saying right now, it is important that you as Tim Lacoste focus on his excellency. He demanded to perform his duties. You can no longer go to him or claim and say, I helped you, I was Tim Lacoste and so forth. Tim Lacoste ceases to exist immediately. The more it is, it is operational, it is now going to be a division amongst itself, which will also create a faction. 
I see that happening. So can Tim, of course, stop immediately now that the president is the, is, is, is the president of the Republic of Zimbabwe, takes him at, 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 at gives him that national status and office where he's got to represent all the people and so forth. If you're doing your Lacoste issues, it must be behind closed doors. People must not know about it and so forth because he's got to unite and he came in with a brilliant speech of uniting people and so forth. So it is critical that what you did, my support for His Excellency E. Dimangako, is I believed he was the right person to change and to turn around the fortunes of the people in this country, especially the economy with the experience he has. I believe he's a good leader. And now that he's there, I think I have played my part. And what is important is to go back to my constituency and come up with programs that augment the work that he's going to do and so forth. So I'm saying to everyone, go back home and do what you need to do so that we're able to augment his policies, his vision and so forth. State security, you've got to understand that he was poisoned when he was under state security. The, his Excellency Idim Nagako is actually much more safer with the ordinary person than his own security. This is why the army stepped in. He was poisoned. Where were you? I saw a number of people wanting to stop him and against state security being firm on, allow, uh, on, on stopping people from even greeting him. That was Mugabe's downfall. The moment Mugabe ceased to be people's person, he lost it. So one, the president must cut down on his motorcade, his security is free. Look at uh, Kama, look at Zuma. His security is not as big as ours and so forth. Government expenditure must equally be cut down. So I really want to say that to you as we usher into this new era and say we've got to be honest with each other and we've got to support the president. At the same time, he is under immense pressure to turn around the economy of the country, to stop these long queues, like he says, to deal with corruption and so forth. Even if I see that there are also people who are criminals in nature who are trying to surround themselves uh, in the name of His Excellency Idi Nangagwa. We shall expose you. You deserve to go before the courts. You deserve to be in jail and so forth. Do not tarnish his image at this point in time. We are all for the president because he is there for the people of Zimbabwe. No one is more superior than the other. No one is closer to him than anybody else. He is the president for the Republic of Zimbabwe and commander in chief. Let us all remember that Chinu Chenu and Chalabachi protector Chin Chen from your people's commissar Temba Miswa. Have a good Sunday. Go and pray and thank God and praise him for what he's done for us. Amen.